If you're new here, my name is Danielle and I have been on a decluttering journey for well over a year and a half, almost two years now. And there's a lot that I have learned, I've discovered, uh, breakthrough moments, emotional, emotionally draining moments. There have been those times. Moments of confusion. Why? <laughs> Who needs this many spatulas? <laughs> Similar to spatulas, <laughs> the spoons. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Is this still too much, having four? Is that still too much? No doubt about that. It's been a lot. It's been a roller coaster ride. But the most important thing is that the results of decluttering have been overwhelmingly positive. So I wanted to make this video because I wanted to talk about some of the things that I've learned, some of the do's and don'ts of decluttering, some of the things that have helped me, some of my breakthrough moments. I kind of wanted to recap this journey with you and also explain where I'm at currently. I first started my decluttering journey with my mudroom. Shall we go back? Let's go back. Let's, come on, let's go back to the mudroom. <laughs> this was a lot. This mudroom was Wow, looking back at it and seeing all of this stuff, it's wow. It was, I remember the feeling of being super overwhelmed and this room, this area causing a lot of anxiety. Uh, it always stressed me out. There are certain areas in my home that I don't like. This mudroom is one of them. I've wanted to make over this mudroom for I don't even know how long now. And in my opinion, it's it, it doesn't serve a purpose. There isn't a function for it. It's also not aesthetically pleasing. So areas that are not functional, areas that don't really serve a purpose or are not aesthetically pleasing to me, especially all three. I can handle areas that aren't aesthetically pleasing, but if there are areas that aren't serving a purpose or they're not functional, these are the areas that tend to accumulate a lot of clutter. This was one of those areas. <clears throat> The basement is another area. The garage was kind of another area for me. The entryway hallway was another area. Let me show you. Let's go back to the basement and the entryway closet. This, <laughs> these two areas also were very overwhelming for me. They, they were always in the back of my mind, always stressing me out. And there's still work that needs to be done with these three areas. But going back to the mudroom, oh, and underneath my bed, that let's take a journey back there. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a lot worse. I'm not seeing any surprises that I like either. Well, that's where that dress went. It's, it's not bad. Yeah. Right? Or is it bad? Is this bad? I tell you. Uh, <laughs> when I decluttered my mudroom for the first time, and I basically got rid of, I would say 90% of what was in there, I did keep some stuff. I moved some of that stuff. I don't know. I think I some of the stuff I wanted to keep, I, I'm pretty sure I just placed back in the house, but most of it was donated. Most of it went. And it was because most of the stuff was just sitting there collecting dust. There was no purpose or reason for the stuff. It was just simply sitting there. We're gonna get into that in a moment. But it wasn't until this very moment, this moment when I was showing the mudroom and it being completely cleared is when it hit me. This was the moment I wanted to become more minimal. I wanted to do this to my entire 
house. It was, and I know I say this a lot, but it was truly a weight lifted off of me. That's what it felt like. Becoming a minimalist wasn't something that was on my radar. I didn't think that I could accomplish that. I thought becoming a minimalist would be much more difficult for me than what I than what I thought because throughout this journey that's exactly what it has become my journey to minimalism the goal was never to be an extreme minimalist because I knew that that wasn't going to work for my family and I I knew that that just wasn't going to be the goal the goal was to simply be more minimal but what transpired was me becoming a moderate minimalist and that's and I don't like labeling things but the reason I do is to give you an idea of where I've been and where I'm at currently. Uh, it's just, that's just, if I had to label it, moderate minimalist would be the label that I would choose for my family and I. And we're very comfortable there because we are by no means a maximist, but by no means an extreme minimalist, but just being somewhere in the middle, finding that balance is where we are most comfortable. I started to work on my kitchen. That is still to this day one of the hardest areas for me to declutter and organize. Let's take a journey back to the kitchen. These muffin tins, here's, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't bake. I'm not a baker. So I don't understand why I have these. I don't even remember the last time I made muffins. But what if I do? Should I keep them? What if I need them? Seriously, I'm asking myself this question. <laughs> because I don't know. <laughs> the muffin pans are tripping me up. <laughs> if I can't remember the last time I used them and I can't foresee using them again in the future, I buy all my muffins. I know I should make them, but I don't. <laughs> That was fun. <laughs> the spatulas, the spoons, the muffin tins. Good times, good times, yeah. When you start to declutter, you may notice yourself, it's almost a little bit of a rush. You, you feel really good about removing a lot of stuff because it's like you're seeing your areas and your spaces cleared and you feel like a weight's lifted off and you want to do that to the whole house. And my problem is one of the things that I wish I hadn't done was rushed as fast as I did. See, I am a very, very impatient person, like incredibly impatient. And when I want something done, I want it done now. So that was one of the things that I wish I would have done differently is not moved as fast as I did. Not that I regret letting go of basically any of the stuff. Go at your own pace, take your time, do little by little. Don't take on a whole room if that's something that you don't have time for or you didn't schedule out you know, a day in time because I recommend if you're decluttering, to sketch out a day and a specific amount of time, uninterrupted time to get that done. Sticking to that time, blocking out uninterrupted time, it's gonna help you flow and move quickly and more efficiently when you're decluttering because there's been so many times where I'll just declutter on a whim and then I'll, I'll have to stop a project and what I'm doing because I have a schedule, an appointment, something going on, and it can be frustrating and harder to get back to what you're doing when you're getting interrupted. And that's when I get the most scattered because I'll start something, I won't finish it, I'll get interrupted, and then I'll start something else without finishing the first thing. You wanna finish a task first before moving on to another task, another project. Going back to some of these areas that are not functional, they don't really serve a purpose, these are the areas that I'm still working on to try and give it a purpose and make it functional. The kitchen is one area where, to me, the layout is so, it, it, it's not functional in my opinion. So it makes it very difficult to keep things organized. I think organization is the hardest thing when it comes to my kitchen and I'm still trying to figure that out. I really do believe that in order to or get organized, stay organized, 
is to declutter first because if if you have a lot of stuff it's going to be much more difficult for you to organize and one of the things that i recommend doing when you're starting to declutter don't purchase anything don't don't purchase any organization materials any storage stuff if you want to do that i would recommend doing that after you've decluttered and you kind of have a better idea of what you have because I, I've done this before because I used to actually have quite a uh, problem with purchasing organization materials, specifically bins, baskets, wicker baskets, pretty organization stuff because it's fun. You know, organization can be a lot of fun and buying that stuff is fun. And I think that sometimes it can be counterproductive when we're purchasing all of this stuff because we're kind of and my mom is like this too. Let's flash back to working with my mom. Come on. That's good stuff. What? They haven't made these stick in the things since 1952. Danielle, it was 19. Oh, cheapers. <laughs> it's so awful. <laughs> Well, it's lost a little bit, but you know when it dries on, it's really good. It's musky. <laughs> oh my! One is for one side, and one is for. Oh my gosh! Why? Why the pie holders? Oh my god! Look at this! Who needs this many pie holders? <laughs> those are all pie holders, are they? Look, these are all pie holders. Look how old they are. They're so good. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. I have two. <laughs> you can buy with two. <laughs> that was fun. I've been helping my parents declutter. Well, my, my dad hasn't been in the video, but I'm trying to get him in the next video. I'm hoping the next video we're heading back over to my parents' house. My mom and dad have not decluttered their house ever. There's 30 plus years of stuff in their home, and my parents had no interest in becoming minimalists but they do want to minimize. They want to become a little bit more minimal because a lot of this stuff is becoming harder for them to manage. My mom was inspired by my journey and wanted me to come over and kind of help her go through stuff. And they are, I have to admit, one of my favorite videos to make, if not my favorite videos to make. My mom and I, I think we have more fun than we do work. <laughs> I mean, we've gotten rid of a lot of stuff. We've donated a lot of stuff. She's made amazing progress but shopping is an issue for her and shopping was an issue for me as well and we'll get into that but uh you know when i was working over at my parents house my mom does not have organizing bins and baskets i did purchase a couple for her for her bathroom but like for example in her kitchen she wants nothing to do with containers she likes things <laughs> she really likes things in their original packaging and that's what works for her, she doesn't want to incorporate more stuff to add to all of the stuff she already has. So I think that sometimes organizing bins and baskets and things like that, I think that they do work, but I think that they work for some people or others, it just does nothing for them. It just causes more clutter. But for others, I think when it does work, is when there's a a space that is already decluttered i think that these things organizing materials work when you have a amount of stuff that is easily attainable if that makes sense i think that it doesn't work when you're not decluttering and you have a large quantity of stuff I think that it just kind of adds to the stuff. And a lot of times when you have that much stuff, you're probably not using it correctly or you're not using it at all because it becomes so overwhelming with all of the stuff that you don't know how to use the organization materials. That was me at one point. So I don't recommend buying new stuff, new organizing bins and baskets, especially before decluttering. Wait until you feel comfortable with the amount of stuff that you want in your home. And that's different for everybody. I questioned for a long time, can I truly define myself as a minimalist? Can I truly call myself a minimalist? 
I, I struggled with that. I questioned if I should even use the word minimalism on my channel because what defines me as a minimalist? What makes me a minimalist, even a moderate minimalist? I think my issue was is that I had a number. Like I, I had, a, I, I felt like I needed a specific amount, a specific number for each category of items in my house in order to consider myself a minimalist and I don't necessarily agree with that. I think to the root, to the core of minimalism is being intentional. I, you wanna know where I learned that? From all of you. I have learned the most from this entire journey, my entire YouTube journey, from all of you, my friends. You guys are not my <laughs> You guys are not my subscribers, you guys are my friends. And you are you will never know how much I appreciate you and how grateful I am for you. Because you are all the ones who continue to mo have motivated me and continue to motivate me to continue with this journey and to also now help other people in this journey. I have family members of mine who have watched this journey, have been inspired and want, they want me to help them and they want to become more minimal because they're sick of their stuff. They're stressed. Stuff can just really weigh you down. You know, and I think sometimes I'm getting onto a rant and I'm not really looking at my notes, but this is important. I think sometimes decluttering I think sometimes, and I'm gonna speak on behalf of myself, our stuff, because at one point in time, stuff for me, and it took me a while to realize this, it was a security. It was a safety for me. Having large quantities of stuff, having an abundance of things, especially essential items, I still have a problem with essential items. I want an abundance of essential items, toothpaste, soaps, conditioner, shampoos, first aid stuff, toilet paper, essentials. I want an abundance of it because it, it makes me, it, it feels like a safety. It's a security for me because I have it. Because what happens if one day I run out of it and I don't have it? Well, okay, I, can, I have to calm myself down and say, Danielle, you have multiple stores very close to you. If you need something, if you run out of something, it's right there. It's right there. You don't, you don't have to clutter up your entire space, your bathrooms and your kitchen to feel a sense of security when you can simply just go get it, you know, but it was, it, it, it's still, and if you're like me, it still wasn't the same. It's like, okay, I know I can go get this stuff, but I still want it here. I want it. What if it's an emergency? I need ease. I need to be able to easily access it in my home. It is a sense of security. It's a safety to have an abundance of things to be surrounded by a lot of stuff. And that was one of the hardest hurdles for me to overcome because, you know, when you've had a lot of stuff with you for a long period of time, no matter what it is, whether it's sentimental stuff or not, it, you do almost grow an emotional attachment to it. And it becomes a force of habit uh, to have that, to have it all of the time. And it's quite a change and change is difficult for me to not have all of this stuff. But I had to weigh out the pros and cons. And I highly recommend that you do this. If you're having a difficult time decluttering or even starting to declutter, or maybe you're at a, you're at a roadblock in your decluttering journey and you're questioning if you should start or if you should continue or finish, Get a list, write a list of pros and cons throughout your decluttering journey. And when I did that, when I wrote pros, cons, decluttering journey, the pros always outweighed the cons. I was spending too much money. I wasn't able to find things. I was losing time and money by always losing stuff with it always being hidden in the clutter. It caused me stress and anxiety. Grabbing the negative energy, grabbing the negative energy or rolling it into a ball my bedroom i had a difficult time sleeping and staying asleep at night because i was constantly surrounded by a bunch of stuff it wasn't a relaxing place for me it caused more stress to have 
all of this stuff. And a lot of times I hid the stuff because I never liked looking at clutter, but I always knew it was in the back of my mind. It was always in the back of my mind, knowing all of this stuff was scattered all over these cabinets, drawers, under the bed, in these non-functional, no purpose, not aesthetically pleasing places. And the pros just always outweigh the cons. So write a list of pros and cons. And if there are cons, Try to analyze it, figure out why this is a con. Why is this a roadblock for you? You know what's best for you and your family. We all have that gut feeling, that intuition. Follow your gut, follow your intuition. You know what's best for you and your family. And if you are working with someone, make sure it's someone that you're comfortable with, that you trust, that's gonna take their time with you and be patient with you. You know, my mom and I joke around a lot. So the stuff that is here that's for the kitchen, um, don't you think it would be better if we found a space for it under the sink in the bathroom? Is that okay? We'll think about it. <laughs> okay. You got a lot of Kleenex. Well, it's on sale and I bulk up for both of us. 19, 20, you have 21 boxes of Kleenex. Is that bad? Well, I mean, I don't think you need any for about a year. Well, there you go. There you go. The there you go. <clears throat> See? <laughs> My mom and I joke around a lot, and we have a lot of fun, and a lot of times, we, that's exactly what it is. We're just, the looks, the, the sassy comments, these are just, this is how we are, but I would never, she knows, that I would never force or push her to do anything she doesn't want to do. That I would never force or push her to let go of anything she did. No matter how trivial I think it is, it doesn't matter what I think, it's what she thinks. It's what's best for her and my dad, for their home. I'm just simply here as a guide to help them and to be support and to help, help them along in their journey. One thing that I need to make clear too is that I have never let go of anything, whether it's my kids, my husband, my father-in-law, my mom, my dad, without getting their permission first. Because I have no idea what's important or special to them. Now I may I don't like show I don't show I don't show my kids on my channel. Ian pops on once in a while. My mom and Tom pop on once. Well, Tom really has it, but my mom, you know, has popped on once in a while. But a lot of times when we're working off a camera, all of this stuff that I think that they may not want, that gets set to the side. And then we go through it and they make the final decision on it. And when they say yes, then that's when it goes. The only time I've ever let go of anything without questioning it or asking is my stuff. I've had a lot of breakthrough moments on my channel and it's usually always with you. Those are the best. It's the memory that goes along with the object. It's, we don't want to forget. And I think that's what my biggest fear is, is that if I don't keep these things, all of these sentimental things, I'm going to lose that memory. And it scares me because I don't want to. I want to be reminded of the people that I have loved and lost. I want to be reminded of my kid's childhood because that it, these things are so important and special to me and I, I'm, a, I'm terrified that I'm gonna forget so I wanna surround myself with sentimental things. I just did a breakthrough, seriously, right now. I li you're literally watching a breakthrough right now. Like, I'm not kidding. I literally just had a breakthrough. I know why now, by saying these things. I've never said these things out loud before. I literally am having a breakthrough moment. That is why I keep sentimental things because I'm afraid I'm gonna forget. Oh my gosh, that's why. Okay, but then now what do I do? I was gonna Google it, but I don't think you can Google that. That was fun. Yeah. Well, let's do a little, little flashback of some more fun decluttering moments.
on the Danny Ray Range YouTube channel. them on and see how they felt you know what I mean like do I like them <laughs> look at what I did smart brilliant now I can go under the box mattresses with ease video with a couple of tips uh, I don't I, I hope that you enjoyed this video it's something I've never done before but something's telling me lately I, I something is telling me that I need to be doing something differently and doing something more and I don't know I've been on this like weird I've been on this journey trying to I don't know, it's different, it's hard to explain, but something's telling me I need to, I, I gotta switch it up, I gotta do things differently, and I gotta, I gotta do this, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do this. I know, it's hard to explain, I can't even explain. Because I think out of everyone in the household, my husband has the most difficult time letting go of stuff, especially accepting free stuff, we're still working on that. He likes to accept free stuff. Flashback to me and Ian working together. All right, yes, keep those. Those are dirty. I wore them today. So why are you putting them back? I don't know. I oh. forgot that I dropped salsa on the pants. Oh <laughs> so you get, you dump salsa all over Not your pants. Not a lot, just and like. And you put it back in there? <laughs> Gross. <laughs> and I don't see you wearing my hat. The uh, The amazing hat that not only has a light on its head, but you can hook it up. It has a Bluetooth here. Yeah, I Yeah. Why wouldn't you wear it to work? What do you think you're gonna get made fun of? Is that why? No, but I just don't want to ruin it. He doesn't want to ruin it. Is that a lie? That was fun. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm still trying to work on that and figure that one out. That's a that's difficult. I don't have the answers to everything yet. I never will. But the best advice that I can give is be patient with each other. Um, you know, understand that something that's special to your partner but may not be special to you, maybe it's trivial or trash to you, may be a treasure to them. So just... Go slow, patience, respect, kindness, caring, love. It's the best piece of advice that I can give is just understanding, being understanding. And eventually, if you communicate with each other and you work with each other, I think eventually you'll get there. And Ian and I were there. We have a pretty good relationship. He's, well, he's my raisin brand. He's my muffin, my honey bunches of oats, my maple buttered waffles. He's my foods, he's all of the foods to me. I just want him to be happy. And he feels the same way about me. We just want each other to be happy, that's it. So as long as we communicate and work together and we have an understanding of each other, it's gonna be fine. It's the only quiet place in the room, in the house. It's, oh, it's gotta be at least 100 degrees in here. 
you know, and there's still other things that I struggle with. Shopping is another one. I still, I, if I wasn't a shopaholic, like I don't want to, cause I think of my mom when I think of shopping too, because I don't think that we'll call it collecting, collecting. Did I use the air quotes right this time? We like to collect things and we love to shop. And the reason why is because shopping was something that I know for myself I did when I was stressed, when I was angry, when I was upset, when I was bored. These were the times where I did the most mindless shopping and I always felt worse after I did it because I would bring this item home or better yet, I would order it online and when I would see it arrive at the house, it felt like Christmas morning for me and I'd get excited about it for a minute but if I was shopping, other than shopping to be intentional, shopping for things that I actually need, want, and use, if I was just shopping because I was bored or upset or, you know, you know what I mean? I would usually get the stupidest crap. <laughs> Did someone knock it, did Ian knock it down and didn't tell me? Who did this to you? Was it me? Oh my gosh, everything I'm around. Everything I touch breaks. But this one was my favorite. No, it wasn't. This one was my favorite. This one wasn't. Why did you get this? I don't know. Why do I get half the crap I used to get? I try to be intentional with my shopping, but if I wasn't a shopaholic, I was well on my way to becoming one before I started my journey to minimalism. And the amount, I think back, and, and I think what made me upset the most when I was done purchasing it was the fact that I was not being frugal with money. Money, money that could have been well spent on other things that were important. And that bugs me. I don't wanna just get stuff and shop just to simply shop because I, the worst part of everything that the guilty part was the fact that I spent money on it and I wasted it and now I can't get my money back on it so I still struggle with shopping it's something that I think I'll always have to work with I have an addicting personality and um, you know that stems back from well we won't get into that but I do and I can admit that I have an addicting personality and it's something that I recognize, I realize, and I have to work, I gotta work through it. And it's, like I said, it's work. It's, you know yourself better than anyone, you know what you need to work on, and you know what your goals are, and you know what you need to do to move forward, and I know what I need to do, it's just, I have to listen to that intuition and that gut feeling and, and not ignore it and sometimes I'll still ignore it because I'm being I'm being selfish or I'm just you know being ridiculous <laughs> because I'm a ridiculous hot mess. More flashbacks, shall we? Okay. You've burnt a hole in my wallet. But a lot of good times. I feel like you're a little bit of a gold digger. We've changed and we've grown apart and we've moved on. I won't ever forget our times together. The shoes, the makeup, the clothes, the purses, the decor, the decor. Well, that doesn't make it any better, Danielle. Stop looking weird. <laughs> okay, start. Okay, please move along. <laughs> I'm ready for dinner. <laughs>
I think I'm gonna wrap up today's video because I think I talked enough. That's one thing I like to do. I like to talk a lot. Did I mention, there was, a, was there anything else I was gonna mention? Don't minimize. This is what I'm gonna close with. Don't minimize, don't get rid of things just to simply get rid of it. If it's important to you, you use it often, you enjoy it, it makes you happy, keep it. Keep it. And, and, and don't feel guilty about keeping it. I don't think that you should just declutter your whole house and get rid of everything just to simply be more minimal because I think that when you deprive yourself of the things that you truly love, like hobbies and interests of yours, when you deprive yourself of that, I think it pushes you in the other direction and it may make you want to stop or it may make you regret some of the things and decisions that you've made along your decluttering journey. Don't deprive yourself of the things that really you really do love and enjoy. And um, yeah, I think I'm gonna end I'm gonna end with that. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I can make more like these in the future if you would like them. Uh, I just love and appreciate you so much. It is, I'm sweating, sweating so much in here, so I'm gonna leave this room, but I hope that you enjoyed it. Next video, I'm gonna try to make it over at my parents' house. I'm gonna try really hard to head on over there and we have a lot more work to do over at my parents house a lot more decluttering to do with my mom and that's always a fun time so let's end with some of those clips some fun clips <laughs> they're not used they're just scrunched up you got some caramels in there too <laughs> uh -huh. probably not fine oh my gosh we'll ask ryan uh, we'll ask ryan you're giving me a look Doily. But mom, if you can't wear it, then why would you keep it? It's purpose of the thing. What the second? <laughs> you can do this too. No, I don't like doing that. I just wrap them around my waist. What do you want to dig up by your boots for? Well, oh my god. How about all these? Oh my god, the swimsuits. Oh. She, she has so many swimsuits. How many swimsuits do you think you own? So you're keeping all three of them. Well, see, I have certain ones. Oh my that god! I all right, right let's. We're not gonna get some of them. I wear out in the pool, and some of them I just wear privately <laughs> out in the bed. <laughs> I have a swimsuit for every spot in the yard. <laughs> You fart. <laughs> <laughs>